For some time now, Corey, a long list of big men have entered WWE to take Big Show's place and put him out to pasture. Yeah, and right at the top of that list is the monster among men, Braun Strowman. When these two behemoths square off, their combined weight nearly tops 800 pounds. That's a lot of pressure for a ring to support. For generations, the steel cage match has been considered one of the most ruthless matches of all time. You make a good point, Corey, about the pressure the ring goes under when Big Show is in there with another giant like Braun Strowman. The stress to hold their capacity is nearly impossible and a recipe for destruction. And we've seen that destruction several times. Off of a suplex, the two exploded the ring right off its bearings. But no one, including the monster among men, has been able to send Big Show off to that proverbial pasture. Just punched him right in the mouth. Oh, Relentless. Just punched him right in the mouth. Oh, Relentless. God. Just punched him right in the mouth. Oh, Relentless. God. He's looking at it. Big Show clearly out of his element at this point. I did not expect to see this. If I could turn back the clock to April 17, 2017, Byron, that was the night Braun Strowman did one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen when he delivered a ring-crushing superplex to the mighty Big Show. Uh, a ring-crushing doesn't even begin to explain it, Michael. The ring literally imploded on impact. It was unlike anything that I've ever, ever seen before. You guys mentioned how the ring collapsed when Strowman superplexed Big Show, which was amazing. But for me, the most amazing part was that Strowman was actually able to get back to his feet just moments afterward. Yeah, the monster among men stood tall while the medical staff tended to Big Show and the referee, who laid motionless for several minutes following the impact. Some of the all-time greats in this business utilized the running power slam as a finishing maneuver. None of them had the utter force that Braun Strowman's version possesses. Somebody got hops. The running power slam from Braun Strowman shows this mammoth's incredible athleticism and raw power. A lot more than the match could be over after Strowman drops you with that maneuver. Being put in Braun Strowman's running power slam is like being picked up for a ride in an amusement park that purposely makes a crash landing. Oh, nasty impact. silly asking this given that there is probably no good answer but Corey how do you beat Braun Strowman well you're right Cole that is a silly question because there's no blueprint when it comes to defeating a monster like Braun Strowman the best advice I would give I guess is try to chop him down to size the impressive job dodging trouble there and I'll tell you not a lot of people can pull off an escape like that Cole Byron, Corey suggests trying to chop Braun Strowman down to size as a possible strategy against the Monster Among Men. What do you think? Would that strategy work against... Thunderous slam. Just a devastating move by Big Show. Things look dire for Braun Strowman. He's a man among boys right now. He's making a statement here with this attack. Down he goes. That'll do it every time. Here it comes. Strowman is taking no prisoners right here. Well, the idea here is to take out your opponent so you have enough time to climb over the cage wall and out to the floor. Oh, look at the oh, oh, Strowman with an elevated triangle here. But he's running on fumes here. Does he have enough left in him to capitalize? 
That'll leave you dizzy for quite a while. Interesting decision here, Corey. I don't know. I kind of like it. He clearly wants to inflict some more punishment. Of course, Braun Strowman has accomplished so many amazing feats over the years. But guys, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen was how Strowman responded to being taken to Suplex City. Harsh impact. He's got a head of steam. See how long he can sustain it. Braun Strowman doing a great job of turning that around. As Michael alluded to, Strowman reacted to being taken to Suplex City by actually popping right back up from Brock Lesnar's German Suplex. I mean, stuff like that just is not supposed to happen. Yeah, Byron, not only did Strowman immediately pop back up, but then he proceeded to manhandle, or should I say, monster handle Lesnar like we've never seen before. There's a certain feeling that comes over the combatants in a steel cage match once they hear the door close and see the official lock it. A superstar must know that their body is going to be thrown against the steel, that their face will most likely be raked across the cage, and that anything is legal in this environment. Folks, this is where superstars become immortals. A win at WrestleMania lives forever in the annals of sports entertainment. He spoke about this earlier, Corey. It's crucial for a WWE superstar to fully understand the gravity of the situation they're in when they battle inside a 15-foot-high steel cage. An individual must be ready to endure pure brutality and be prepared for the fight of their life. No one leaves a steel cage match without scars. Corey, you said something of value for once and that anything is legal inside the steel cage. To that point, something else we've seen over the years is interference. Whether it's The Undertaker coming up through the ring or John Cena getting bashed in the head with the cage door from the outside, it's all legal in the cage. That's what you call a bad landing. What a stomp! Good grief! Look at this. According to historians, the twisted metal that we see as part of steel cages today dates back 80 years. To settle a dispute between competitors Jack Bloomfield and Count Pietro Rossi, the two met inside a ring surrounded by chicken wire. At first, these types of matches were referred to as fence matches. Oh no, we could be looking at a power bomb. I think you're right, Cole. Look out. Corey, you gave us an impressive history of the origins of the steel cage match. I'd like to point out to our viewers that from the 1960s to the mid-1980s, chain link fences were used to enclose the ring for schoolboy out of nowhere. Double schoolboy! There's a pin now. We've got a cover. We talk about how important stipulations are in a steel cage match. If superstars sign a contract where the only way to win is escape the cage and have both your feet touch the floor, the competitors must have a plan. Especially since you have to be comfortable trying to escape through the cage door as you do climbing over the top of the cage and vice versa. Corey, you touched on something moments ago that's so important for the combatants in a steel cage match to remember. A superstar must be able to think offensively to figure out how they're going to escape the cage. They must think defensively at the same time so they can prevent their opponent from getting out of the cage first and winning the match. Well, a superstar must become comfortable with escaping the cage by both exiting the cage door and by climbing over the top of the cage, they must also be aware of their attributes and what's best for them. Let's just say if you're a giant like The Big Show, The Undertaker, Kane, or even Braun Strowman, it's preferred to exit through the cage door. The WWE Universe has seen the evolution of the steel cage in the enclosure known today. Strowman. 
This is not going to be good at all. Oh, Braun Strowman slamming into the mat. That's what he was looking for, Michael. Talk about the progression of steel cage matches and the type of structures that have been spawned from them. I need to point out that some cages have been electrified. One was made from bamboo in the form of a Punjabi prison match. And of course, the elimination chamber with glass pods and steel doors. And today we have the asylum match where weapons are on top of the cage. Just go, oh my God, the world's largest athlete with the world's largest spear. Just a devastating move by Big Show. There it is. Now, can Big Show put a weapon of mass destruction? We may be looking at our winner here, guys. One of the greatest strikers. Looking for all the glory here. Two, three. This steel cage match is in the books. Here is your winner, The Big Show. That'll do it. Big Show walks away with the double. For some time now, Corey, a long list of big men have entered WWE to take Big Show's place and put him out to pasture. Yeah, and right at the top of that list is the monster of the men, Braun Strowman. When these two behemoths square off, their combined weight nearly tops 800 pounds. That's a lot of pressure for a ring to support. And there are few things more unforgiving than the cold steel of a cage match. What's coming next? Taking their time. Oh, punch to the gut. I'll take the wind right out of you. Oh. Right across. This might be it. Oh, my. The best way to describe combatants clashing inside a steel cage is its battle of attrition. Sometimes a superstar is left with no choice but to fight fire with fire and do whatever they need to do in order to win the match. And sometimes it comes down to a superstar doing whatever they need to do in order to survive. I don't think he should get up. Byron, you touched on this earlier, but it's so important for a superstar to accept that there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide in a steel cage match. That the conflict will be resolved within the 15-foot high steel walls that surround the ring. And that losing a cage match can mean much more than a mark in the loss column. For some, it has meant the end of their career. It's difficult to describe the damage that can be done to a superstar who competes. The monster among men picks his opponent up. Oh my gosh, from what heights? I think this is the beginning of the end, Michael. You know, guys, I've been at ringside for many of the Big Show's WrestleMania matches, and I have to say, I'm always shocked when he falters at the showcase of the Immortals. Right, he's got him here. He's got him up. And... Oh, running STO plants him. Nicely done. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, what impact. Big Show has taken a lot of damage. I'm not sure how much more he can take. Michael, the Big Show's WrestleMania struggles are real. He's lost to guys like John Cena and Triple H, but also was shown up by a boxer and a sumo wrestler. Yeah, that's a WrestleMania curse. Yeah, but I'd say that jinx ended when he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Everyone was gunning for Big Show that night, and he still won. Mention a curse again, and Big Show is going to make you eat that trophy. Oh, my Lord. Strike right. Good night. As you may remember, Kurt Angle actually fired Braun Strowman back in January of 2018. And, guys, I can't help but wonder how different the WWE landscape would be if that firing actually stuck. Jeez, look at Big Show's face. On the topic of Strowman's temporary firing, I couldn't think of more than a few superstars who wished it stuck. Kane and the bar immediately come to mind, considering what he did to them at the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, respectively. I don't disagree, Saxton, but let's be honest. The true highlight from Strowman's firing 
This one can launch Michael Cole off the raw stage like a lawn dart. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Shut up. Oh, he's got him here. He's got him. Oh! Uh-oh, he's in trouble here. He's looking shaky. This could be the end. Oh, boy, he is rolling. Oh, jeez. The steel cage is a massive enclosure that stands 15 feet in height. For almost 35 years, a select group of high flyers have taken their aerial assaults to greater heights. And when I say that, I mean superstars climb to the top of the steel cage. The real high rent district. Braun Strowman is getting ready here. <laughs> Looks like this show's over, guys. Things just went from bad to worse for the big show. Poor Giant. To your point earlier, Byron, we've definitely seen some unbelievable attacks be launched from the top of the steel cage. And you mentioned the most iconic. He survived the cage.